and um, well, there's tears welling up in his eyes. Very, very sad to see. And Jamie Moore must be going through. Well, who knows what the feelings are? All sorts of emotions. Consummate professional, Jamie Moore. And they continue to keep Matthew Macklin in the ring until they've uh, got him sufficiently on the stretcher. And the crowd applaud as they wrap Macklin up. And um, they'll be taking him to hospital very shortly we would imagine there's the oxygen mask on Macklin and the stretcher waiting there's Jamie Moore going in to see him look at that well Matthew is obviously responding if Jamie's down talking they're shaking hands they're shaking hands so that is fantastic signs are to good, see. signs are good. That is great to see. They shook hands and now I think they're they're even trying to talk in there. The oxygen mask still on Matthew Macklin. And of course he will be taken and tested and uh, all the medical routines will be carried out. But that was an encouraging sign and we hope and pray that Matthew Macklin recovers fine yeah but that that was a, a happening sign the fact that it was responding speaking to Jamie Moore huge signs that things may be all right yeah hand up again to the crowd exhausted and on his way to the best possible medical care Matthew Macklin you'll be pleased to know that Matthew Macklin just regained consciousness there and did speak to Jamie Moore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this week in Manchester there's been many standing ovations. I think this deserves the standing ovation of all this week. Please, two great fighters. Absolutely. Well said, Mike Goodall. The crowd applaud. Jamie Moore finally takes his applause. A tenth round knockout in a, uh, a fight that in Britain, well, unprecedented for many a year in terms of action, but uh, tempered with our thoughts and prayers with Matthew Macklin. Yeah, well, we can hope that it's uh, uh, mostly exhaustion from Matthew now. He put so much into this, and uh, just it seemed that the experience of Jamie Moore just give him the edge at the end when it Ladies counted. and gentlemen, after 1 minute 29 seconds of round 10, the winner by technical count out and still the light middleweight champion of Great Britain, Sobers Jamie Moore! I'll ask the steward in charge. Mr. Jeff Bolter to present the Lonsdale belt to the still light middleweight champion of Great Britain, Jamie Moore. Well, we will keep you updated with uh, Matthew Macklin and his, uh, his progress. Our thoughts are with him, of course. Uh, we hope to speak to uh, Jamie Moore in just a, a couple of minutes' time. It was a, a brutal fight. Uh, Matthew Macklin will update on his condition shortly. Um, Jamie Moore, the victor, the uh, British Lights middleweight title uh, still belongs to him. Uh, Ed Robinson is speaking to him behind the scenes right now. Well, Jamie, first of all, I'm sure our thoughts are with Matthew Macklin. Have you got mixed feelings now after a fight like that? About Matthew? 
Well, I said before, Andy, he was a quality fighter, and I said we should never be fighting for the British title. We should be fighting for the European. And I think on that performance, you've got to say, I think, because I believe I'm world class now, and um, I'd say he's, he's even edging towards world class. I mean, it was nip and tuck all the way. I think I was just ahead every single round. You know, he was giving me some good body shots, and I knew that was going to come, and we, we worked, me and Oliver worked on it. And I think you can definitely say he's European class. And he'll, he'll come back without a shadow of a doubt and fight for this um, British title. I mean, maybe he could fight Michael. Jones, you know, um, I'm going to give this title up now. I've, um, I've been at this level too long, and um, Frank Malone is going to engineer me towards a European, if not a world title shot. Because after that, Ed, you know, I, I can't keep fighting like that. I've got three more years. I promised my wife, Colleen, that I'll be done when I'm 30. And um, yeah, I'll have to be done when I'm 30 because I can't keep fighting like that, man. How physically and mentally tough was it in there? Did he hurt you at all? Oh, he hurt me, you know, from the first round. But uh, I've always said before, I've got balls like a bull, you know, I just won't give up. And um, if, that, if that was any other fighter in there, he'd have stopped him without a doubt because he was, he was hurting, you know. And I think he's he proved it in the past how hard he punches. But I stuck in there and I was, I was one step ahead of him all the time, you know. I'm an intelligent fighter, but, but I'm, a, I'm an aggressive fighter and, and it's hard to beat that sort of person. And hopefully Frank can get me a European or a world title shot in the near future. Hopefully Sky can back it now because I want to get my mortgage paid off and I'm done when I'm 30. <laughs> Did you speak to him afterwards as he came around yeah, in the ring? I congratulated him and I told him what a tough man he was. And, um, you know, he, he said the same about me. And, um, like I said, 100% he'll come back and win the British title. And for you, you're looking forward to the world title. Can you win that? Definitely. You know, I've shown there I've got the heart. Um, I'll, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll improve again after this. But, like I said, just said, Ed, I can't keep fighting like that. You know, um, Hopefully, um, I won't have to because that was the sort of fighter Ma Matthew was in. None of us took a back backward step. I said it before, it would be like two Mexicans in there, and it was. And, um, you know, I've proved that I can, I can stick it at the top level and um, it, I, I, I want to win a world title and then get out on top. Well done, great fight. Yeah. Ricky, was that the fight you expected? It was and more, I think. Um, tonight, I felt proud to be able to call them two lads my mates. You know, they were, it was absolutely first class. Matthew Macklin just wasn't going to be denied. He just kept going, kept going. Jamie Boxer, tremendously smart flight. Picked, up, went, picked the time, went to rest. Picked the time, went to go for it. And probably that was the difference in the end. I think Matthew Macklin didn't quite pace the fight right. I think he, uh, he hit his pit, he started pushing his punches in the middle rounds. And in the first couple of exchanges in the 10th round, I turned around and said to Johnny, I said, I think it's over now. I think he's got nothing left. And... Uh, really brings a tear to me eye to see him go down that way and be stretching out like that and I just pray he's OK. But congratulations to Jamie, he was, uh, he was class tonight, Jamie. The atmosphere was, was amazing early on. Uh, would adrenaline be a factor, do you think? Oh, yeah, nervous energy was, it played a big part in, in Matthew Macklin's uh, approach to this fight. It came out like, like a racing car. Uh, that fight reminded me, puts you in the mind of Jeremy McClellan and Nigel Benn, Michael Watson, yeah, yeah, oh, those cra crashing fights, unbelievable pace that he came out was with. And that's where he, he, he measured it wrong. He came out too fast, got towards the end, he had nothing left, he was fatigued towards the end. Whereas, uh, uh, whereas Jamie Moore did the right thing, he tucked up, he preserved his energy very, very well, he did the right thing. But Matthew Macklin, initially, the, how aggressive he was, the speed he came out with, the body shots he threw, he wasn't w wanted to take a backward step, even when he got caught with strong thudding shots from Jamie Moore, he refused, he refused to step back. Ricky, did it surprise you just how strong Macklin was early on? Uh, not really, no, because I've, uh, I've sparred with him and it's like sparring with a bear at times, he's so physically strong. But uh, he come out of the traps like a greyhound, he really flew out. And in fact, you know, I had him maybe a couple of rounds up, just that it, it was ebbing and flowing, it was going one way or the next. You know, maybe Jamie could have been a couple of rounds up, but I think what it was, once he hit that 10th round, there was nothing left. It just didn't quite pace the fight right where Jamie did, and that what made the difference. We thought he maybe had burnt himself out in the first five or six rounds, but it, it got brutal in, in, around about round seven. You know, they both said it's going to be a, a brutal fight, and you never could have guessed how rough this fight was going to be. This was a real humdinger. This was two fighters but that seriously believed they were the better fighter in the ring and they were willing, they, they wanted to draw first blood. And it was, I've never seen a fight like that, ever. You know, these guys, we were hit, they were hurt, they still came back for more. Hit and hurt and still came back for more. You just, your emotions were up, up and down. It was such an unbelievable, aggressive fight. Second to none. How did they keep going? 
when it's a fight like that? It's just heart. It's just pure heart. And, you know, and Matthew Macklin, you know, the, the, the courage he showed. Jamie would come back at it and with thunderous shots and he'd just come through it and he'd come through it. And uh, But I think Jamie paced it right. You know, what he knew when to initiate his attacks, he knew when to back off and conserve a bit of energy, where Matthew was flat out and he may have got his nose in front, but... Really, you know, if you if you don't pace it right, you know, you could be 11 rounds in front, but if you get beat in the last round because you've not paced it right, it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a shame. But Was it a case towards the end that Macklin just had nothing more to give? Jamie Moore's experience won him that fight tonight. Uh, Matthew Macklin, it was totally drained. He had nothing left, and that was part of the reason why That's he ended up in that situation. See. It Probably wasn't a nice thing there. to see. It was, it was... It was a thudding shot. The, Jamie Moore's shots were very, very strong all the way through the fight. But when you're a, a fatigued, tired fighter that's giving you all physically and mentally, and you get hit with a shot like that, there's no coming back. Jamie Moore was, was well ahead on two of the three scorecards. One scorecard was, was level. Would you have seen it that way, Ricky? Um, yeah, you know, it, you could have a case for that very much so. You know, I just think uh, Matthew was just... His work rate was just, like, un unstoppable. It was, it was. I mean, I've got a good work rate, but I think Matthew took it off the rector scale, you know, to, uh, today. But, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't argue with Jamie being front either because it was such a close fight. The rounds were so, so close. You know, it was either you look at the quality or you look at the work rate, you know. Uh, and Matthew Macklin showed some good quality at times, but Jamie just showed that little bit of cuteness. We're all keen to know how, how Matthew Macklin is. We, we can shed a little bit more light on it now. Uh, Adam Smith can, uh, can bring us up to date. Adam. Well, that's it, Dave. Uh, I'm in Matthew Macklin's uh, dressing room after that huge effort he put in tonight. He's, uh, he's now been uh, transferred to the Hope Hospital in Salford with the very best uh, medical care. Billy Graham, his trainer, has, uh, has gone with him, as has his uh, dad and brother, Seamus. Uh, we wish him well. The, uh, the encouraging news is that Kerry Kayes' conditioner, uh, we just had a word with him, and he said that Matthew was uh, sitting up in the ambulance and, uh, and he was talking. So, so that's an encouraging sign, but uh, obviously our thoughts are with uh, Matthew Macklin after what was such a brutal fight, Dave.